Anything else on the response to public comment? Okay, bring your own device, BYOD discussion. Please. Well, going to what we just talked about, um, I think there's a lot of confusion out there. Um, I did get a letter from, from Dr. Littlefield. Dr. Littlefield, I don't know if you cc the school board. I did. You did, okay. Um, one of the things that Dr. Littlefield explained, and please correct me if I'm misquoting this, uh, that BYOD is not a program, it's a policy. And, and Dr. Littlefield sets that out right in the beginning of this letter. That brings up a couple of questions for me because as recently as this memorandum on August 14th about BYOD that we received, enclosed is information on the BYOD program to date. If you check our website, it says that our forum is on the BYOD program. Um, and Going back to Dr. Littlefield's letter, he is, he's, to me, laying out the differences between a program and a policy. And I agree with him that there are distinct differences. But I think we have been just throwing the word program around and publishing it um, when we shouldn't. This brings into the question the answers that you just gave. Because if, in fact, this is a school board policy, I would argue that those answers should have been answered by the school board. And if this, it's a school board policy, there should be distinct policy uh, word, uh, verbiage to handle these different contingencies that come up because it's our policy. Um, so I don't know if there's any discussion on that question, but I, I think we need to straighten that out. I have other, I can go on, but you know, we need to back this up and call this a policy. And we should look through our literature and correct that. Um, I believe Dr. Littlefield is correct. It is a policy and therefore it should be handled as a policy, not, not as a program. Um, as we are considering the BYOD policy, I think there's two basic questions that we need to deal with. The primary question is, what is the educational benefit to the school? And the secondary, the secondary question is, what are the inherent risks with adopting this policy? Logic would dictate that we would look at those two things and weigh them against each other. Because there has to be some benefit to assume some risk. Now, as we just heard in some of those responses, some of these risks are not really clear. When we start getting into images that can be brought into the school, things that can be done wrong, these are not things that are easily quantifiable, and a lot of them have not been tested yet. So we don't really know. I would add to that list that um, although bringing a virus in inadvertently is probably not going to make the parent um, uh, liable, I would ask the question about child pornography. Because possession of child pornography is, going to, is a serious issue under, an R, under the RSA. I think we should have the attorney look at what happens, where the liabilities fall, if an image that qualifies for child pornography ends up on a device or circulated through the school. Um, I think that's much different than inadvertently um, downloading a virus or some of the other um, things that could happen as far as violations of policies and so forth. So I would ask uh, if I could get the board support that we would have our attorney look at that question so that we can assess what the risk is to adding these devices. Um, okay. and I finish, I, he didn't acknowledge that he saw me, I'm sorry. He uh, shook his head. Okay, okay. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, if you refer to the letter that Dr. Littlefield sent, he goes through some of the the advantages from his perspective of having BYOD. Um, as I look at these, I really only see a few that can't be met by the devices that we provide in school. Calendars for students, yes, I can understand that um, if you have a smartphone, you can use your calendar more easily 
than you could perhaps by writing it in a, a assignment book or using the school computer. But I don't see that as a great advantage. Um, you know, access to information for completing assignments, we certainly provide reference material and computers here. I, I really don't see that as, as being a monumental thing that we need to do. Um, using online dictionaries, again, these are all things that I believe through the classroom computers and the technology that we have, all these needs can be met. So as I'm, and, and Dr. Littlefield also points out here, rightfully so, that there's no curriculum uh, involvement of this. Teachers are not gonna be planning um, you know, uh, projects and courses based on BYOD. So as I look at the, the benefit column, I, I will admit that there are some, but to me it, it seems rather small and mostly things that can be provided by our own technology, which is much more secure. And when I look at the risk, and, and really what we're talking about here is possible risk, um, I, I think there's a lot of concerns. So I think to do our due diligence here as a board, we need to assess the risk. We need to kind of step back from this and take our own personal you know, wishes and everything away from this and look at what are the potential risks, what's the potential benefit, and make a logical decision based on that. Thank you. Patricia? Uh, first, I have a point of clarification. It was my understanding that Bring Your Own Device discussion was about we were discussing what we were going to present at our public forum, which is two weeks away with the start of school, um, eight days away. Uh, we're putting administration in a tight spot. We're having a public forum, and they may need to present. And I thought that that was what this discussion was about. Whether you call BYOD a program, a policy, this board has already voted to approve the BYOD program to be rolled out across um, second to eighth grade. We've already made that decision. Um, I um, think that we need to present something if we're having a public forum where people are bringing us questions uh, or bringing us their concerns. Um, it's great that they're expressing their concerns to you, but they aren't here and we don't have names with faces. People talk to me all the time about their concerns about the school district and I tell them I can take your concern, I can answer it to the best of my ability, but you need to come to a school board meeting and sit at a school board meeting and ask the school board directly what your question is. Um, to assume that we as board members know how a child would use their own device in school to help them educate them, to help their educational process is short-sighted on our part. We are not as technology savvy as these kids. Uh, they use these devices for a number of things and who, this policy of BYOD is to help children who are already tech savvy not to walk in the door of our school and step back 20 years. They're, these children use their devices, fast, type faster, find things quicker. Who, if we are trying to make them the best students we possibly can, and the iPods are in a cart in a different hallway, why shouldn't that child be able to go on their dictionary if their device is registered, they're using it appropriately to look up what they need to know. If a child has done their work and they want to learn about quantum physics, why is it our responsibility, or why is it up to us to say, no, you can't use your own device? We walk around and use devices all day. That's how these children live. They live, they're technical, no, they're digital natives. It, this isn't scary to them. It's, it's just what it is. It's another tool. It's a book. It's a ruler. It's a everything. We've already deci decided as a board that we embrace BYOD as a program or a policy or whatever you want to call it. When this board originally voted to do a pilot, it was putting the decision making on the parents, whether their child brought it or not. There are the haves and the have nots in the whole world and kids are gonna learn that. Some kids are gonna have them and some kids aren't. Some kids are gonna go to their grandparents and say, can I get my birthday present, my, uh, my birthday present, my Christmas present all bundled together because I want an iPod, because I can use it in school. I have a child who types faster than he writes. That will be helpful to him to be able to put his assignments in his book. And there are other kids that have other uses. I thought that this discussion was about 
what we're presenting on September 4th, which is two weeks away. Yeah. Mrs. Corkus, please don't speak for me when you say that our students are more tech savvy than we are. Um, I keep up on technology, I read about it, um, I use it. So I don't think we want to assume that all of these children know more about technology than we do as board members. If it is the case that we don't understand the technology that these kids are now being allowed to use in the school, then we better get off our butts and learn about it because we are the school board and we are approving these policies. So we need to understand what it is that we are approving. This discussion, as far as I'm concerned, was for us to deliberate the benefits, the risks of BYOD. I had asked the chair if we could have a time to discuss these things. Um, my understanding was he agreed. We put this on the agenda. Um, I never heard that it was limited to a presentation that was going to be given. I thought it would be valuable for us to have a discussion about how we feel about BYOD before we have a public forum. And I'm bringing up some questions here that I think we should weigh logically and not personally but as a policy that's going to be the best for the school. And I don't think there's any harm in discussing these things, and uh, you know, maybe we're going to learn from that. Thank you. Trisha, did you have something else? Sorry, I thought you did. No. Anything else on BYOD? I've always, it's always been my impression that this is a policy change. Uh, a lot of other things came up while we were discussing that, discussing that, um, and the benefits of it. And I think that that gets lost in why we call it a program. Um, for me, making the policy change is these kids are, or the children are probably bringing these devices anyways. And I think the risk is there that they may use them inappropriately, and there is no safety net there. By implementing this policy, you are then giving the school an opportunity to register these devices and being able to have a good safety net for them. And that is what, why I'm supporting this program. I think it's actually making it safer for our kids. They're going to be bringing them to school anyways and on the bus. Well, if we are going to do things because children are doing it anyway, I think we need to take a, look, a long look at our school. We set policy, they set the rules. Not every person, not every student follows them, but administration and teachers do the best they can. If a child brings a device anyway, and there were no BYOD program, there would be no access to the internet for them. So to say that they're going to do bad things anyway, uh, I don't follow that. We had a policy here previously where children brought devices, kept them in their backpacks, could use them after school or to get a parent pick up, things like that. Um, I don't think that we as a board and as a school district should, should take the idea that we're going to succumb to whatever children are doing. And that's the reason that we make policy. And it, it concerns me to hear school board members say that. If it's a good policy, let's go with it. But let's not do it because the kids are doing it anyway. I'm not suggesting that we're succumbing to something the kids are doing, but I do. I am suggesting that um, the educational process is changing for the children, and part of that educational process is their personal devices, and that is what I'm suggesting. I think when you have um, children whose brains are different look different on a screen than ours, um, who are um, not afraid of the device. Sometimes when you have a device uh, in an adult, and I'm guilty of it, and I have talked to a numerous teachers that said, I, if I waited until I understood everything about an iPad to bring them to the classroom a year into the, pot, a year into the iPads being here, they wouldn't be here. Because sometimes I can learn from the child. These children are growing up in a world where they are going to need to continue to educate themselves throughout their lives because the world is changing and what better example to show that you need to continue to learn 
to have a child actually teach their teacher if they're troubleshooting that they're not getting a certain URL or something's not coming up or somebody's device isn't flipping as quick as it should um, than to see the teacher working with the student. These children are going to need to learn to collaborate with each other and um, work in groups in a way that when we were students, it wasn't that way. It, I can't remember a group project until I was in high school and real collaboration probably wasn't until the end of college. Um, these children are not afraid and when I say they're more tech savvy, a lot of them are more, your, your children, you're in the business. But a lot of the children in our district, their parents aren't in the business. They're, the kids are saying to their parents, go get an iPhone because it's the easiest one for you to use. Um, it, and I think when you um, have children who, and I will use an example of a certain family I know, that their children read thousand page books and that's pretty heavy in your backpack when you're carrying back and forth your school books to add your reading for accelerated reader or your reading in your downtime, whereas having a Kindle in your backpack is a lot less heavy. And we're, if we're not, if we didn't have a policy that said that you could bring your own device, those Kindles would stay home and those kids might not read because they might not be willing to carry that book. I have, um, and I'm using my personal example, not because I want my child to bring a Kindle, he probably won't bring it because he prefers the tactile of a book, but there was a period in time in third grade when he was not reading to his level because he was tired of kids saying, why are you reading that for? That's boring. I mean, he was reading books like this, and he was public peer pressure was against him because he wasn't reading what his classmates were. We, there are all these examples how technology can help kids learn what is of interest to them in their downtime when they're in a finish their work I, it's not a i sometimes think we've blown it out of proportion that it's allowing the parents to make the decision whether their child brings it to school or not mrs corpus you talk about collaboration but the child that doesn't have their own device either for financial reasons or because their parents don't allow them to bring it, is not gonna partake in that collaboration. We provide through the 21st century learning here, collaboration using iPads, computers, all nature of devices. I don't think that our children here in Hookset want really for any technical uh, devices. I mean, we have a very rich program here where our kids are exposed, uh, allowed to do research and have access but I see a potential problem here where you're going to get a set of kids that do have very sophisticated devices, and you're gonna have other kids that are, do not have access to those devices. And we are not going to be able to supplement them if we're not making BYOD part of our curriculum. If it's only a policy to allow, then we are not providing for those children that don't have. And I think that is our job here, to fund the technology to an adequate level and to make sure that it's taught to the children, but not to rely on children bringing their own devices, which could be of all different nature. Um, if, if Kindle readers are effective, the price on Kindle readers is, is coming down. This, this, our, this budget cycle, we may look to purchase Kindle readers. They're actually a very efficient device. But I don't think that we should put the parents in a position, put the child in a position where he has to come to school. You talk about a child being made fun of because he's reading a thick book. What about the child that never brings a device and he's ashamed of that? Or, or his parents feel ashamed because they feel they can't afford the device. Yet they're paying taxes for this school and for equal education, but yet their child is at a deficit because he has no device. So these are some of the things that concern me and I think as a school board that we should address when we set this policy. Because I, there's a lot of great things about devices. But the question here is whether it's a student's device or a device provided by the school. And I think that's the discussion, that's the separation that we need to have. Any other comments? I, I will 
say just just as far as the the uh, forum, it's my understanding that there will be a brief presentation on BYOD, and then we'll be entertaining questions and comments. So I know you mentioned the, the, the forum. Mr. Am I, Chair? Am I correct in whatever the forum like? Okay. Mr. Chair, I'd like to add to that uh, format. I think after the brief pre presentation, each school board member should be given an opportunity to state their position regarding BYOD to let the public understand who has what positions. And therefore, they may be able to direct their questions to people based on that person's uh, view of BYOD. If that's the will of the board. Have issue with that? No? Okay. Anything else? Okay, well, next. Can I just go back and see if we have consensus to get this term program, you know, separated out on BYOD? I mean, are we in agreement that that should be done? understand that it's not really a program but I mean in, in some aspect it is we're implementing a program by that policy uh, by, by by passing that policy because uh, some of the things like in the user agreement it says uh, in this program uh, devices you know blah 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 I mean it, it's using the word program a few times but it is a policy as to what they can what they can bring to school or not so I don't know. I don't want to just say it's not. It, it isn't a program, but to use the word program sometimes as for the implementation, I don't. I don't see a problem with that. Well, the reason I bring this up is 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 really was brought to my attention by Dr. Lowfield's letter, and I mean he's the superintendent, and I'm sure he knows. I don't necessarily know all the differences between programs and policies, but I can imagine that there are quite a few. This is not a program that's going to be integrated into the curriculum and, and supported by the school. And I think, I don't want to speak for Dr. Littlefield, but I would think that that may be where, where the distinction is versus a policy that allows something to happen. It doesn't, doesn't support it, doesn't actively make it happen, but it allows it to happen. And I think we need to think about it in those terms, or maybe it needs to become a program. If that's, I mean, if that's the will of the board, then we should look at it that way. But I think we should be very clear, and I don't know if Dr. Littlefield would like to add to that, but I saw in his letter a, a, a clear distinction between those two and that it was important. Well, I agree, it's a, it's a policy, in essence. So are, are we in agreement that we should look through our literature and correct that word and make it policy instead of program so that we're accurate? I, I guess, I, are you looking for, are you looking well, for if I have, action? If we have to make a motion, then I, I, I guess I would. Change the literature for, for this year? Well, I'm just looking at, we have it on our website. We're, 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 we're advertising it on our website as a program. And to me, a program is something that you support there's going to be some activity behind that program, you know, those kinds of things. Uh, a policy is quite different. I think once a policy is instituted, whatever happens, happens. So I would like to, uh, then I would like to make a motion that we go through and in our um, literature, our forms and so forth, we refer to the BYOD as BYOD policy and not program. If I can get a second. Well, I'll second just for discussion. Um, okay. Discussion would be, no matter how you feel about BYOD, I think we need to be accurate and we need to be clear. And as this distinction was pointed out to me as a school board member, I think we should make sure that all of our literature is accurate and clear. Whether you're in favor or not in favor of it, it should be clearly stated what it is.
so that people can understand it better. Mike? Uh, but I would not be voting if it's to change literature and things that are already printed out because of the cost and the time involved in that uh, for this year. I could say from this time forward, everything, or, or change it on the website, um, or things like that, but, um, or, or the parent agenda, parent night agenda for the information night, uh, that was wrong and that could be changed, things like that, but um, to change all the literature and the user agreements and everything I think could be too costly and, and, and time-wise also. Patricia? On the um, bring your own device parent information night flyer, it does not call it a policy or a program but the user forms have all been copied at all three schools already. And I don't know specifically if they call it a policy or a program in it, but they are all copied in. Um, I know at Memorial they're being put in envelopes on Thursday or Friday. Right, they do, the user agreement does say, um, for purposes of this program, blah, blah, blah. And so it does use the word program in those, and I, I couldn't vote to change that at this time, just because of the cost. Well, I would say we are at step one here of BYOD and we should get it right. And if I would also be very interested in looking into more what the differences between policy and program are because there could be some liability issues in that term. Because a program, if the school is going to provide a program, think about this. Is it going to provide equal program to all students? Uh, how does that work? We, we can't provide equally a program that supports students bringing their own devices because we don't own those devices. I think that's why it falls into a policy of allowing them to bring the device. And I don't mean to split hairs here, but if we're going to start, we should start correctly and not have ourselves having to backtrack even further down the road here when someone comes forward and say, my child wants to be part of the program. You know, it, it, it's a program that should be equal for everyone. And I can see that under the word program. But does your motion mean to change all the literature and the stuff that's already printed and before it is mailed out, if it passes your motion? Certainly. Because I don't think we should give a false impression for the parents, and I don't think for our own transparency and clarification if, we're, if we are in agreement that this is a policy and that we have incorrectly called it a program, I think it's incumbent upon us to correct it. Otherwise, as a board, we're saying, yes, we made a mistake that we're aware of and we're not gonna correct it. And I think that that would be a mistake at this point. Any other discussion? We have a motion a motion to change our literature in any place where it refers to BYOD as a program or anything other than policy and correct it by using the word BYOD policy. All in favor of approving that policy as presented signify by uh, that policy, that motion uh, as presented signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed. Opposed. Okay. One, four. Any, well, anything else on Yes, I'll make another motion that we, in the future, do not refer to the BYOD policy as a program or anything other than policy. Same argument as before. I'd rather go back, but that's not the will of the board, so let's go in forward. Let's call it what it is. I'm sorry. I, I would agree with that as in the, in the future, for the future to do that. Even at the parent information night, it could be stated you know, that this is a BYOD policy and not to, not to have program. I guess it's not on that, that, that sheet anymore but um, just to make sure that that isn't on there and to use the word policy from this point on. Any other discussion? All in favor of uh, approving the motion to uh, not use the term 
program, but only policy when referring to BYOD in the future, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. One nay. One nay. Anything else on that item? 